Okay guys, good morning. I'm gonna do a quick run through of the stock indices, figure out what things are, what, what's going on this morning. And then I'm just gonna do a quick run through of all the charts that I look at um, and just give you guys a quick read on everything. So we'll start out here with the NASDAQ futures. Uh, we're bullish right now, still holding above this 11.90, you know, it's about 11.903. You can see it came down, bounced off of it, and is moving up. So bullish in general on NASDAQ futures for for in the short term. And everything on this video is going to be short term focused. ES, you can see we make this little uptrend line right here. We're kind of holding that, still up, you know, still moving up in an upward trend. Uh, we are... We do have negative divergence on the hourly right there. So we'll see you know, if that plays out. But ultimately, we've got to see a break of this trend first. Uh, until then, it's going to continue to move higher. Uh, here's the RTY, which is the small cap futures bullish. You can see here we've got this uptrend line there. Walking up this uptrend right there. And starting to put negative divergence in on the hourly chart. But again, got to break the trend, and it's still an uptrend. Triple Q's uptrend here. I don't see negative divergence here on the hourly chart. Uh, if we look at the daily, I mean, the day hasn't closed yet, uh, but we do have negative divergence on the daily, uh, and we put that negative divergence in. Basically, right, this is where the negative divergence really started to go into play, but it was also, this was a negative, a divergent high as well. So. Daily chart has it, hourly chart does not. And we have an uptrend here, so we'll just continue to watch this uptrend. Might wanna run up to this 297.50 uh, level, somewhere right in there. SPY, <clears throat> uh, bullish in general. We do have, uh, there's no negative divergence on the hourly here. We do have, you can see that it bounced off the support last week right there at 350.86 twice, tested it twice, once, twice, and is moving higher. So that's a successful test and hold of support. So SPY in general is bullish, uh, at least on the short-term chart. If I look at the daily, we'd wanna, you know, if we make a new marginal high soon, if we run up to this three, 375 area and do it soon, it's most likely gonna put in a, a divergent high on the on the daily chart, we'll have negative divergence right into major resistance. That's a really, that's a really good area, in my opinion, to um, establish a potential longer-term swing short. So I'll be watching that. But as of, as of right now, bullish in the short term. Once we get up to that 375 level, we're going to have to see how the chart looks because that might be the key area where short uh, short position makes a lot of sense. Medium to longer term, I'm bearish. Short term, this is bullish. Uh, gold here. <clears throat> this trend line that I have right here is, it's kind of chopping through. So we're just going to go ahead and get rid of that one for now. Um, but gold, the main thing is downtrend line right here. We broke above it, created a bull trap. It sold off and we're just right there at resistance again. So it keeps getting rejected. I expect we'll get rejected again, make a new lower low. 1800 we're not too far off now um, but we got you know I think 1800 right in there is going to be the end of this downtrend line and then we'll start to look for bullish setups dollar big sideways chop zone here's the DXY nothing really going on there gold miners I don't see anything in the gold miners really here's Barrett gold kind of just down at the bottom of this um, this big sideways range we're just down here at the bottom right there. Uh, there is no divergences or anything that I see, so uh, I'm not gonna do anything on these gold miners yet. XLV just continues to walk up. It's getting, a, you know, this trend line here is where I think when it breaks, we'll start to head lower, but uh, we haven't broke that yet. We got a couple gaps down here to fill as well. Negative divergence continues to um, <clears throat> be in play on the hourly chart so just need a break of this trend line i think it's coming but we don't have it yet financials catching a little bid today so you know financials might want to run up and tag this you know 28 i probably can adjust this trend line slightly 
um, but we'll, we'll say it's up around 28 bucks. Uh, we might run up there. XLE Energy catching a bid. This one's catching a big bid today um, and moving higher. This was obviously priced into the chart. If you look at the daily, we had bullish divergence way back here before energy had broken out and everybody, nobody was talking about it. That's when I was talking about it. So uh, I was saying energy looks bullish, looking for a break of trend. We got the break right here with a big gap up and we're continuing higher today. So next stop, probably this top, the top of this range right up here. It's about right there. So we'll say uh, 39 looks bullish fang stocks they're just kind of hanging in there holding above support or above support there's apple support slightly above microsoft slightly above amazon just doing nothing sideways google's moving slightly higher google's been uptrending and it continues that uptrend netflix eh, looks like it's starting to break down i don't like this trend line that much i'm not going to trade netflix just because uh <clears throat> I think there's better setups, but here's your here's an uptrend line on the daily chart in Netflix. We broke it once though. It's it's been violated. You can see we broke it, recovered it, broke it again, recovered it. So we're breaking it again. It's like, how do I know that this isn't just a false breakdown since it's already violated through that um, trend line? So that's why I don't like it as much. So I'm gonna and there's really no negative divergence either. Um, well, actually. Sorry, I take that back. There was negative divergence right right there was some when we made a higher price right here was on lower momentum. Uh, <clears throat> KHC, eh, just sideways. You can see the last while it's gone sideways. What I'm looking for KHC is a potential move down to about this 25 area. Uh, that's really the area that I'm going to be interested in buying this thing going long. Uh, but we're just kind of going sideways right now. This is one Joe that I pointed out. I'm long this one. I haven't, I don't talk about it a lot, but I, I pointed out in a couple of videos, uh, bullish divergence is what we had. This is the same setup as XOM basically, but bullish divergence on the daily chart, bullish falling wedge, wait for the break of trend line. Here's your break. Uh, and we are moving higher. So since that thing's broken out now, uh, it's up about 7%. I am long this one as well looking for a move up to about 35, 35. Uh, and then potentially the top, you see these two peaks up here, all the way up here at uh, 40, 77. So that's what I'm kind of playing for is about 40, 77. I think that looks good. Nvidia. Yeah, just kind of flagging out, but hanging in the flag. So we're just going to continue to wait to see what happens. It's just flagging out right now. Adobe, yeah, Adobe broke support, and it's just kind of, you know, consolidating. A lot of these ones that have broken support, they haven't, they haven't started moving down yet. They're just kind of chopping around, consolidating below those breakdown points. DraftKings. All right, DraftKings starting to look like it wants to break down, but we'll see what happens here. They might recover it. So I got short on Friday up here, and it sold off down to the bottom of this flag pattern, which is right here. That's a pretty good area to cover. Now we did, you know, it did do an undercut, and but it has since really started to recover it. So to me, that seems like the area to at least cover in the short term and wait for the more impulsive breakdown if this thing's going to continue down and create this uh, f this big flag pattern like this. You know, here's your, there's your bear flag and you break down like that. When you get the breakdown, maybe that sets us up for a move down to 1860 or so. Uh, but until you see that breakdown, an impulsive breakdown, which will probably come in the form of like a gap down or something out of this flag, Look for like a gap down and then it'll sell off real hard. That's the signal, but until then, it's just in this flag. So they could chop it up to the top of the flag again, continue to kind of chop it around. So I'm gonna cut, you know, I covered mine basically this morning uh, right here. So the trade was there to there, small trade, but again, you know, from the high, and I didn't get it at the exact high, but from there to there, six, 7% trade in, a, in two days, not bad, we'll take it. Redfin, 
you know, Redfin broke support. There's your support in Redfin. It broke, came down, did a back test, sold off again, coming back in for a back test, potential even for a reverse head and shoulders I see here. Um, you can see shoulder, maybe this is another shoulder and there's your head and that would shoot this thing up. So I'm not in this one right now. Uh, I just am waiting for some more information around this one. Zoom video, you know, we broke to the bottom of the trend. You know, this one's done everything that I had expected it to do. Um, so there's not, I'm not as enthusiastic about this trade right now on this one. I, I'm not in this position, but here's what it did. It, you know, you had this up channel right here. You broke to the upside and it started to put in negative divergence right there. You can see it. And if I go to the daily, it's a lot more clear. There's your negative divergence right there. So all this price act action up here was a divergent high telling me that the prices were going to break and drop. So, and then what I needed was to see a break of support line. So once we broke, the way I traded this one is we had this trend line right up here. I, I, I've since erased it, but it was right there. And I said, okay, if we break this trend line right here, then we're probably gonna come down to the bottom of the major trend line, which is the one here in, let me get rid of this green one, the one here in red that's uptrending. And we did, we hit that. And I said, if we get there, then watch for a break of that trend line. And if we break that trend line, most likely we're gonna come to the bottom of this price channel, which is, you can see the price channel right here. Uh, and we did. So there's the bottom of the price channel. Now we undercut it slightly, but we've recovered it. Then we broke down, we're chopping around here. So the most at this point is potentially a gap fill. I mean, obviously there's, there, there could, it could fall a lot more, but I think there's a lot of buyers waiting to buy this thing at 326. So from where we're at now, that's a move of about 15%. Uh, and, but we're kind of in the middle of no man's land, you know, and if we move up, we're about 6%. So it's not an area that I want to just short right here. I'm kind of watching to see what it what it does. Carvana, let's see. This thing is, yeah, we still haven't gap filled. They've stepped in twice early both times. So here's this big gap. Everybody sees the gap. So they step in early once, comes back down. They stepped in early again. That was surprising to me. I didn't think they would step in early again. I, I kind of figured it would gap fill and actually undercut it maybe a little. But they stepped in early, bounced it up. Uh, I still think that gap's going to get filled, uh, but we'll watch. Right now, the level to watch, I think, is this 201.42. 20, it's about 201.60, so a break of that level, and we're probably going to gap fill. We can, we'll just keep watching that. Tesla playing games. Uh, I was watching that this morning. And, you know, They made it look like it was going to break down. We were right in this area, but then they popped it up above support and they recovered it so i think supports right around 406.58 uh and you know unless you see impulsive breakdown it's just going sideways you can see this thing's pretty much gone nowhere for quite a while so we're just we just have to wait for some sort of a a, a signal etsy just going sideways i don't see anything in etsy same with w i don't see anything in w um you know i mean Longer term, this thing's broken its major support. So I do think it is heading down to uh, 134, you know, about 135 actually. But that doesn't mean we can't run up and do another back test before heading down. So SQ, yeah, I think SQ is going to go down. It looks like it's going to head down. We had this uptrend line, we broke it impulsively, bounced off resistance or sorry, bounced off support right here at, uh, it's about 170.50, had a reaction up, and now we're starting to fade back down. So to me, it looks like that will break and we'll head lower. Peloton, here's the hourly chart going back to the March lows. Here's your uptrend line right here. Uh, this one never had negative divergence though, so that's why I, I'm not a fan of this one. Even shorting this one, I just don't like it here. What I'd prefer to see is Peloton to, continue to move higher and run up and make a slightly new marginal high somewhere up around this 139 area and do it from below this trend line putting in negative divergence below um, this this support line and you know so running right into resistance that would be an, a really objective short 
So that's what I'm looking for on this one. Unless I get that, I'm just not really interested in it right now. McDonald's here is kind of interesting. You can see on the daily chart, we're building positive bullish momentum. Uh, and we have been putting in divergent lows. So the spikes down here, you can see, uh, are being bought. And so to me, that you know is short-term bullish at least. We're getting bullish divergence on the daily chart. That could mean we move up and do a back test all the way up here around 235 or, or something like that. Um, so I'm watching this one. Uh, I, the only thing I don't like is, you know, I don't see a price, uh, a support channel to, to actually monitor. If I go to the hourly, maybe we can find it there. I mean, yeah, it's just this flag area here. So, you know, I, I don't I don't really like this one going long on this one. I'm just going to let this one go and see what, where, what it wants to do. Qualcomm just continues to chop around up in this area. Um, however, all this action up here is, you know, divergence. There is negative bullish divergence right here. We almost took it out, but they didn't. So you have bullish or you have bearish divergence. This is, uh, you know, I think we're going to come down a gap fill. There's this big gap down here. And we've got this price channel, though. So we'll watch to see what happens. Uh, if you look at the hourly chart here, if they run up and make a new marginal high anytime soon, let's say today, then that is going to be a di divergent high. As long as it turns down, you know, if they make a new high and then it turns down and the head starts to head lower, that will be a negative divergence on the hourly chart. So I'm watching that one. BBY, this one, I'm not in this one. Uh, it's It doesn't want to break. So uh, you can see here we have... Here's your trend line on BBY. They, you know, I've adjusted this, you know, I had used to have my trend line here. It broke below right in here, but then recovered it. So I adjusted it down like this. And then it does, it's doing the same thing. It broke down, but it's not impulsive. It just breaks down and then just chops around and then it's recovered it. So there's nothing on this one yet. However, it is setting up in a big, larger bearish rising wedge pattern. You can see I got the top marked out. We got the bottom big bearish rising wedge pattern. And on the daily, big negative bearish divergence. So we're just waiting for that impulsive breakdown sell signal of this trend line. And that should set this up for a move at least down to 91.40. Chewy. You know, Chewy, here's your uptrend line right here. They dip below it briefly intraday, but it pretty much closed, uh, you know, right above it or right at it, basically. And we're still chopping around that trend line. No impulsive breakdowns yet. However, uh, we do have bearish negative divergence. So we're waiting for that impulsive break of that channel. And then that should get us down to probably about 4560. GPS here, same deal, uptrend line right here bearish negative divergence in play, uh, but we have no break of, of trend line support. So when that breaks, uh, that should uh, get us a move down to about at least 1563. But until that breaks, it's, it's, you know, continuing to move higher. Oil stocks, they're doing good. CBX obviously ripping higher today, 5%. I don't own this one right now, but I do own ExxonMobil. Uh, and it hasn't got to my price target yet of 41. So that looks like it's in play. Looks like it's that's where it's heading. And I bet if I mark this flag out, here's your break. Well, we don't actually really have a clean flag. Um, so we'll just watch this. But I think 41 is the major, you know, that's going to be some resistance. And we had lots of support right here along 41. So heading up and doing a back test to that, I think makes a lot of sense. Looks good to me. Uh, and down here, I've got these, uh, or actually, we can look at shop. It's just kind of hanging in there at support right there at eight. Uh, it's about 884.90 uh, and just nothing to break yet. Now, it does have bearish divergence intact, uh, so we're waiting for a break of support. We get a, that break of support probably heading down to somewhere around the 716 area. And then these solar stocks, they all none of them have broke yet. They're just kind of continuing to move up their, their uptrend. So here's TAN, solar ETF, uh, bearish divergence in play, completely intact right there. And you can see, so momentum has been fading quite a bit. 
price has been moving slightly higher on less and less momentum. We're waiting for a break of the trend line. Uh, when we get a break, first target, I think, is about this 50, 58 level. NEO. NEO, what they did, so I shorted this on Friday, but I covered it. It was just a day trade for me. You've got this trend line right here, and they they dipped it below briefly, but then they recovered it. So I'm not in this one yet, or again, you know, I shorted it on Friday with the big drop down to support, but it's it's held support. So waiting for another impulsive drop. If we get that, that should set this thing up down to this trend line, down around 26 or so. And then we'll wait for a break of that. And if that breaks, probably heading down to these gaps, 940 and 803. Run. This one I covered this morning. Um, and so for me, you know, I'm, I get in and out stocks, but as a swing trade, this still looks good to the downside. However, because the other solar stocks haven't broken uh, and I saw a little bit of recovery in those solar stocks, I, I expected run to get a little bit of a bid. So I'm looking to reshort it if I can get it up in this area. Uh, with a back, you know, as a back test or a new divergent high above the 60, uh, you know, 6150 area, um, that's an area I'm looking to reshort this thing. And it is, you know, here's your uptrend line on run. We broke, broke trend right there. Did a back test. We've got negative divergence, so it tells me that we're heading lower uh, to about 45, and then potentially 36.50 and then maybe even all the way down to about 20, 2350. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna look to tr try to get a different position. FSLR, and that's the thing, you can see FSLR, they broke the, here's your support line on FSLR right there. It broke on Friday, but it wasn't impulsive. It just limped below there and just closed right below. So they, today they you know made it look like it was gonna break, but then they recovered it. And so when I saw the recovery, in like stocks like this and, and the other solar stocks like NEO hadn't broken down. That told me that run was maybe gonna, you know, get a recovery. But FSLR, it's just hanging in there, but it's not breaking down impulsively. So waiting for that impulsive breakdown before taking a position on this one uh, to the downside. That's all I got, guys. That's a quick run through, but that's a lot of the stocks I look at. If you guys have any other stocks you want me to look at, leave it in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up. Take my training course if you want to learn how to do this, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.